you're struggling trying to decide what is the best statistical test for you to use, then this video is exactly what you need. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the differences between a independent t-test, a paired t-test, and an ANOVA. And then we're going to go into a real life example where I've actually used each of these statistical tests in the same paper. And so I have that published paper linked below and you can actually look at it and look at how we use these. And today I'm gonna walk you through the logic of why we picked each of these statistical tests to give you real world examples to help you to choose the best statistical test for your research. Hi, and welcome to my channel. If you don't know me, I am Dr. Elena Reister. I got my PhD in chemistry, and now I make videos on this channel to help you get more success in your research with less effort. Today, we're gonna talk about the three main statistical tests and the differences between them. So let's start with the independent t-test. An independent t-test is going to tell you if two independent groups are actually significantly different from each other. If you compare that to a paired t-test, this is actually going to tell you if the difference between two sets of data is not zero. So in a paired t-test, what you're actually comparing is the difference between two sets of data where individual units in both of those sets have a closer relationship to each other than they do to those around them. And so the actual statistical test you're performing is if that difference between a sample in group A and a sample in group B that's a set is significantly not zero. So if there is actually a significant difference in the actual difference between those. So a case where you would actually use more of a paired t-test is something like twins. So if you had just a group of people and one you gave a placebo to and the other one you gave a supplement to, then and these weren't related to each other at all, then you'd have to perform an independent t-test to be able to get at whether there's actually a significant difference in the response you're looking at between group A and group B. However, if you specifically are doing this with twins, where one twin is given a placebo versus another twin is given an actual treatment or a supplement, then instead of just comparing a whole set of one group to a whole set of another group, what you can actually compare is the difference in the response between the twin that was given the supplement versus the twin given the placebo. So what this actually helps us to do is eliminate a lot of confounding variables. So if we're specifically only looking at the differences between twins, we're now eliminating genetic variability if they're identical twins, but we could also be eliminating parental variability. So because they have the same parents, they're likely in a similar environment. So this can oftentimes, if you can actually get sets that are very close to each other, another way of doing this is a before or an after where you take the set of data before somebody starts a treatment and then take it after. And so by doing this, you can actually increase the power of your statistical test because you have data that is in the same set as each other. Whereas an independent t-test is just going to compare the whole of one versus the whole of the other. Whenever you are looking at only two groups that you are comparing, you need to determine if the samples within those two groups are actually closely linked to each other. If they are closely linked to each other, then it is better to run a paired t-test. If they're not, then you should run an independent t-test. So the third type of test that we are interested in today is an ANOVA. And an ANOVA is basically a t-test, but when you're comparing more than just two groups. So if you have experimental data that is more than just two groups, you actually need to perform an ANOVA on that data and not just a series of t-tests. Whenever you're setting up your statistical test, you need to know the direct hypothesis that you're testing with that statistical test. And if you want to know a little bit more about hypotheses and how to form them and everything, check out this video above that goes into hypotheses and how they relate to the test you're performing. But in our specific published paper that I'm going to talk to you today about as an example, 
we had multiple different hypotheses that were testing, and so each of them needed their own statistical test. The hy overall hypothesis for our paper was testing whether moms who were fed a high fat, high sugar diet had increased circulating lipids, lipids in their placenta and in their fetuses compared to moms fed a normal diet. And this is a great hypothesis overall for a project or a paper, but it's really not helpful when actually determining the statistical test that you're using, because there's actually a lot of different hypotheses wrapped up into one single hypothesis. So the first part of our hypothesis was determining, do moms with a high fat, high sugar diet, also called a Western diet, do they have higher circulating lipids than moms with a normal diet? So in this case, we're gonna go through the logic. How many groups are we testing? Well, we're only testing two groups, the Western diet and the normal diet. And then the second question is, do those two groups, do the samples in those groups have a higher relation to each other? So in our case, our samples were not siblings. They were not consistently anything that, that would tell me that sample A over here has a higher relationship to sample or sample A in the Western diet has a relationship to sample A in the normal diet. They were just replicates um, of the animal model we were using. So in that case, because we don't have sets and we only have two groups, we used an independent t-test to tell us if our lipids were higher or not in the blood or circulation of these moms. The second part of what we were testing were lipids within the placenta. So the first thing that we were testing is do the Western diet moms have increased lipids in their placenta than the normal diet moms? This may sound like we still only have two groups, Western diet and normal diet. However, our placentas are actually divided out by fetal sex. And so in biology, you usually want to divide out your sexes because there's a lot of things that can happen within just being a male fetus versus a female fetus that can actually change stuff. So if you're only analyzing all of the placentas, instead of analyzing distinctly between male and female, you may actually get no significant differences because there is uh, sexual differentiation. And so in this case, we actually have four groups. We have um, placentas from Western diet moms and female fetuses, from Western diet moms and male fetuses, normal diet moms, female fetuses, and normal diet moms, male fetuses. Because we have more than two groups that we're comparing, we now need to do a ANOVA test on this. And so we performed our ANOVA test to actually be able to figure out if the individual groups had a higher percentage. So this allowed us to see if there were trends between the fetal sex and between maternal diet. The last hypothesis we performed was actually to determine if lipid content was different between two different sections of our placenta. So every placenta has a labyrinth and a maternal section. And so within each placenta, we wanted to know, did one side or one section of the placenta have a higher content than a different section of the placenta? In this case, we're comparing two groups. We're comparing a, a maternal section of the placenta and a labyrinth section of the placenta. However, we do actually have sets here because each of our sections or each of our two groups are actually in the same placenta. So we can actually directly compare the labyrinth minus the Western diet and actually see if through replicates, is that actually not zero? So is there consistently a direction of difference between these two different sections of the same placenta? So in this case, we use that paired t-test to determine if those two sections within the same placenta is actually the same because we still have two groups, but there's actually set. So one labyrinth is actually linked to one maternal section more than it is to every other maternal section. Overall, I really hope that this helped you kind of start getting the differences, especially with a real life example of how to use an ANOVA, an independent t-test, and a paired t-test.
If you want an easy flowchart to download to be able to differentiate between these three types of statistical tests, you can access the link below and this will allow you to download my easy printable chart for you to be able to easily walk through which test you should use for what you're doing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.